My name is Polisa and my home is Africa. There is an extensive, often understated U.S. military presence in Africa, primarily through AFRICOM, which operates an extensive network of bases and outposts across the continent. Stated intentions include counterterrorism efforts, military training, and humanitarian missions. Unstated purposes suggest the U.S. seeks to maintain strategic influence, support covert operations, and secure access to resources. The Allied Footprint strategy uses small, flexible bases to quickly deploy forces, allowing for military interventions without large-scale troop deployments. This approach indicates long-term engagement across Africa for the purpose of controlling the land and people of Africa. While African leaders and the 1.4 billion people on the continent continue to allow this, some African leaders appear to be firmly in bed with the United States. Some other unselfish, bold, and courageous leaders say, no. If this geopolitical trajectory continues, there will be no need for innovation on the continent for it will have been successfully recolonized and slaves won't have the freedom and luxury to become empowered and self-reliant. Right out the gate, they hit you with some pretty staggering stats about the U.S. military budget. Yeah, like, get this, it's actually larger than the next 10 countries combined. Seriously, it's mind-boggling. It really puts things in perspective, doesn't it? When you see the sheer scale of it, it makes you wonder, does that level of military spending truly equate to greater security? Or could it potentially be creating more instability in the world? That's the big question, right? Are we talking about genuine security or is this more about projecting power on a global scale, which is the view points out can be, well, a little tricky. Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Um, today we're tackling a listener request, right? You guys wanted to know more about the U.S. military presence in Africa. Yeah. And honestly, after digging into this document you sent over about U.S. strategy there, let me tell you, light footprint is going to have a whole new meaning. Definitely a catchy phrase. Right. But what's really got me thinking is how this light footprint is actually laid out. You mm -hmm. know, they're talking networks of bases, mm -hmm. partnerships, not just like massive installations everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's a more strategic placement. Exactly. Okay. Makes you wonder what that means in the long run. For sure. So we're really talking about AFRICOM here. And right. just, you know, for anyone who needs a quick reminder, AFRICOM is basically the U.S. military's dedicated command for Africa. Mm. They're overseeing operations across the entire continent. Yeah. And something that stuck out to me in this document was how much it hammered on counterterrorism, yeah. training, humanitarian aid. Like, those were the core mission points. Yeah, sounds pretty standard at first glance, right? Yeah. Almost like a PR pamphlet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're the good guys helping out. Exactly. But here's the thing. When you start connecting those dots, this whole expanding network of bases, this long-term presence they're building, mm -hmm. the document hints at something way more strategic. Okay, so like, what are we really talking about here? Well, think about it maintaining U.S. influence in a region that's changing rapidly. Makes sense. Especially with all the resources and the whole geopolitical chessboard. You know. Right, because it's not just about what the U.S. wants, but how this affects the people who actually live there. A hundred percent. Yeah. You've got 1.4 billion people in Africa, and they're not one monolithic voice either. That's a lot of different perspectives to consider. And that's what I found so interesting, how the document itself highlights this. Okay, I'm curious, like, give me an example. Well, on one hand, you've got African leaders who see aligning with the U.S. on security and economically makes sense for them. Sure. But then, you know, on the flip side, you get a whole counter narrative emerging. Oh, really? Like what? People seeing this light footprint as basically neo-colonialism 2.0. Whoa. Like, is this just a way for the U.S. to control resources and kind of dictate what happens in Africa? That's the fear. Yeah, that's a heavy accusation. It is. And it's not just theoretical either. You see this difference of opinion playing out in real situations. Give me an example. How so? Well, the document even mentions some countries are all about these U.S. military training programs. So they see it as beneficial. Yeah, like it'll strengthen their own security forces, it right? Makes sense, to a point. But at the same time, you've got protests, pushback from communities who are worried about what these bases mean. And might run mentally, socially, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So it's this super complex situation, no easy answers. No easy answers at all. This is really making me think because if we step back from this document for a second, learning about this light footprint, its impact 
things are far from simple. Definitely not. There are legitimate security concerns, absolutely. But then you've got these fears of exploitation, like you said, this new era of U.S. dominance. And I think that's the key point here. We need to be talking about it, debating it. 100%. What are the long-term implications of the U.S. being so militarily involved in Africa? Is it truly about stability or is there something else going on? It's really making you think, and I hope it's making our listeners think too, because this document, it doesn't give us the answers, but it shines a light on this whole debate, which is something we all should be paying attention to. Especially with how much potential Africa has. Exactly. The decisions made in the next few years about partnerships, resources, global relations, it'll have a huge impact, and not just on Africa. Definitely a global impact, for better or for worse, depending on how things play out. And that's what it all comes down to. Will this light footprint help Africa rise? Or is it going to cast a shadow over the continent's future? A question worth pondering, for sure. For sure. And on that note, listeners, that's something for all to think about as you learn more about this issue, because it's constantly evolving. Lots to unpack, that's for sure. Absolutely. All right, everyone, that wraps up another deep dive. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.